While this season for the Trailblazers hasn't been as successful as in years past, the seeds have been planted for a much brighter future behind two up-and-coming players that have been getting fans out of their seats. While we've heard about Anthony Simons for a couple of years, and he appears ready to achieve a lot of that promise and potential, it's Nasir Little that surprised us with a bigger role, more production, and is proving himself to be a great pairing with Simons going forward. I mean, you know, I was just watching uh, the defender. You can, I was looking at um, the defender, he wasn't really engaged, and then once I kind of seen him turn his head, I just went. And then at that point, you know, I kind of knew he was late, so I knew once I caught the ball, just go straight into my shot and knock it down. Little has made a name for himself with strong finishes in transition, and we can see the chemistry between Simons and Little has led to a number of fast break buckets for Nasir. But he's not just a guy who runs the lanes and catches close to the hoop for dunks. He can also lead the break himself, and if the defense doesn't step up properly, he will impose his will on all manner of shot around the basket, displaying tons of athletic ability and nice touch. I've also seen plenty of evidence of Little spotting up on the perimeter and feeding off the attention Simons gets on his drives to get buckets from the outside, utilizing a great rhythm dip into his shot as the speed of the ball going down matches the speed of the ball going up. And if the closeout comes hard, I love how he splits his feet, gets right by his man, and you're not going to want to get in the way as he bears down on the rim like this. Plus, as a secondary ball handler, we got evidence of his ability to run the pick and roll. I dig the hop into the shot off the dribble after coming off the screen from Nurkic. And if he gets the screen set low enough, he can take off on the runway with athletic and creative finishes. It's clear to me these two guys are the future of the Trailblazers. And keep your eye on Nasir Little because he's the guy that's going to make the engine go. I had a chance to sit down with a third year forward and discuss his season and go over a few clips. So, Nasir, thank you so much for coming on the show. I can't appreciate it uh, enough uh, to get some valuable time of yours. First of all, I just want to make sure, uh, how, how is the torn labrum going? Are you rehabbing? Is it going well? Yeah, it's going great. Um, just been, you know, doing rehab every day, starting to get my range of motion back. And uh, as I transition um, out of the sling, just starting to build that strength back up and uh, should be, uh, should, things are going pretty smooth. Well, that is that is great to hear. And again, thank goodness that it's your non-shooting shoulder and not your uh, the shooting shoulder. So I'm, I, I anticipate like, you know, full recovery and no problem shooting, right? <laughs> yeah. No, no, no. Well, you know, I wanted to talk to you about some plays. Uh, and let's just jump right into this because I, I grabbed a couple for you that, we, that I shared. Um, and the first one we want to talk about is basically the secret of basketball for me is lifting your feet in the air at the same time. So we have mm -hmm. a couple of these plays where we use what I would call like a, the gallop dribble uh, into scoring. And I'm wondering, can you just give us a, a sense of like where you, where you learn this, where you develop this kind of technique of uh, using the grounds to explode off the floor? Yeah, yeah. Um... It's just kind of for me, like, you know, I'm a pretty athletic player and, you know, my trainer, Daryl Harden, um, we had just drilled, you know, kind of when you get into the paint, kind of jumping off too, um, just because I feel like I have more balance, more power. Um, I'm more able to absorb contact. And uh, in the weight room, my trainer, Randy Hadley, um, we had just been doing a lot of two foot explosive drills, things like that. And I think there is a time and place to jump off one foot, but usually where there is uh, guys in the paint, I think with two, you're able to be a lot more creative and just kind of um, do different things in the air. That's interesting. Uh, you know, I had seen at some point uh, a while back a, a college analysis that said that players that went off of two feet got a lot more and ones and finished mm -hmm. a lot yeah. more of through through contact. Does that feel sure. like that makes sense to you? Most definitely. Um, I think when when you're when you jump off one foot, you just don't have the the balance. You know what I'm saying? If a guy, if you jump off one foot and the guy hits you, you're probably going to go like flying. Whereas with two, you can lean and jump and absorb that contact and hang in the air. And, you know, your body control is more on point in those type of circumstances. Mm -hmm. Now, did you learn any of that like in college or in high school or was that after? That was, I learned that in high school. Okay. Uh, my trainer. Cool. All right. Well, uh, lucky you, because I feel like we're still trying to <laughs> teach that a, a lot of people. And uh, I use uh, lifting both feet in the air for a lot of things like splitting and going on the catch, uh, mm -hmm. skip dribbles, you know, gallops, all those things. So it's, it's great to see how and I agree with you exactly how you're saying that not only is it more explosive off the floor, but you can handle I think I think you can handle contact a lot better. right? Yeah, most definitely. 
Cool. Well, you know, so we have uh, another couple plays I want to go through that deal more with the offense and how you um, operate out of that. Now, you know, I like how you are the, – the thing that stood out to me the most is how you just – you stay within the framework of the offense and you let it work for you to get you know, right. easy open threes. So in this first clip that we grabbed, it's sort of a pin down on the left side that you're setting, but then flows into a pin down for you. So can you walk us through this play and how it works and how you knew how to come right off of that screen by Nurk and get open? Yeah, so on that play, um, you know, I was just watching uh, the defender. And if you look at him, him and Nurk are, you know, touching each other. You know, Nurk is setting like a little, not an aggressive pin down, but he's just kind of standing there. And you can, I was looking at um, the defender. He wasn't really engaged. And then once I kind of seen him turn his head, I just went. And then at that point, you know, I kind of knew he was late. So I knew once I caught the ball, just go straight into my shot and knock it down. Now, the way you knock that down is, again, if you notice, you lift both feet in the air, and it's just about a hop. It might be a boom, yeah. like a left-right real quick, but I actually consider yeah. those hops too. Uh, is that another technique that you are you are conscious of when you're trying to get those shots off? Most definitely, um, and that's something that I was conscious of in high school. Again, like with my trainer, just off of – when I hop into my shot, I'm a much better shooter. I think that just allows me to get into my rhythm better. Um, I, like the flow of my shot just goes better. If you see me videos of me working out, I'm just hopping into it. Um, it allows me to just get a better rhythm on my shot. And uh, again, there is a time and place to, you know, go left, right or right, left coming off certain actions. But for me, if I can, I, I prefer to hop into it. Okay, full disclosure, I am a hop shooting coach, and I did not put you up to that. Uh, right. <laughs> you, yeah, it was all on your own. But, yes, yeah, everything yeah. you said I agree with. I'd almost say that uh, it's it's faster, too. I think when you hop yeah. in that shot, you get a lot quicker. Do you agree? It's for sure. For me, it's just because you, you just, like, you know what I'm saying? you just into it. For me, like, it just kind of allows you to go into one motion um, easier for myself. Well, you know what I also like about it is that if you're going to hop on the shot, then you can also in the, prep the same way and then split and go instead of shooting. Mm -hmm. And now the defense has no idea what you're doing, right? Yeah, and I also agree, like, in the sense of in regards to your triple step, like, step, like you can – your pivot isn't necessarily established. So you can jab left, go right, jab right, go left. It just allows you to – um, gives you a little bit more leeway in that regard too. So is it safe to say that you work a lot on that, like in the off season, how to how to split and go on uh, different directions? For sure, or? for sure. So we'll see a lot more of that going into next year. Yes. <laughs> All right, I'm looking forward to that. Well, let's talk about this one because you have another play out here where uh, we have a drive and a kick to the corner, and you lift both feet. Now, I, I like to say you want to land with both feet down at the same time for that reason, where you right. have either as a pivot. But sometimes left comes down first or whatever, but you still get that explosive move. So what happens here, and how did you read this uh, on you know KD, of all people, to get this bu uh, bucket off the glass? Right. So, you know, when you're looking at it, I'm kind of just seeing where the defender is, like, as the guard's hailing the ball up top. And, you know, uh, the point guard, Anthony's a talented scorer, so, you know, that warrants a lot of guys to be, you know, in the pain and kind of sag off and shrink those gaps. And uh, when that's just going to create a closeout situation for myself. So, you know, I'm seeing the way KD closes out. And uh, a lot of guys are taught to, you know, in the league, taught to send baseline and that way, you know, use the baseline as an extra defender. So, you know, I just jab that direction because I know he's going to, you know, go that direction. And then um, I seen uh, Patty Mills come in and help. And, you know, at that point, I was just kind of got into my little floater and just, you know, banked it in. Now, the uh, the the ball fake, I think, is a big part of that, would you say, as well, besides the, the jab? Yeah, just bringing the ball as, a, you know, kind of giving the idea that I'm going to rip baseline. And um, especially when you have that, you know, reputation of being a guy that's really good at driving the ball, you're going to be able to get those – situations where you just show it and, um, you know, show a jab and go the opposite way and kind of get what you want. Yeah, absolutely. So I love all this. Now, the uh, the bank shot is a little bit of a, you know, unique take on a one-handed floater like that off both feet. Uh, is that something you definitely practice as well? Yeah, so I, I would honestly say um, be, maybe after threes, the, the floater is something that I probably work on the most. Uh, you know, just in my workouts is something that I'm continuously repping, um, especially just to kind of be more creative because, you know, you're not going to always be able to get to the rim. And I think it's important to kind of have a, a shot that you can go to any given moment. They could just kind of get something um, off with a good look. 
Uh, let's go to our last clip here because this is another uh, I, uh, subject near and dear to my heart, and it is the notion of a loose ball floating, you know, bouncing in down the middle of the floor and how we try and retrieve that. And so mm -hmm. against uh, Denver, the ball gets loose. Can you just talk to us how what what happened here? What was going through your mind if you can remember, and like how what the method you used to pick up that ball? Yeah, so basically, um, you know, we had you know in our shoot around, we had discovered a coverage on Eric Gordon on Aaron Gordon and. Um, you know, our center was hedging really hard and eventually was able to get the steal and hit it off Gordon's leg. Um, and it, as you're seeing, you know, there was a little, I had the advantage of the sense that, you know, Aaron had to like kind of turn around, track the ball, and I'm just watching it all happen. So I just burst to the ball. I was able to get there. And, um, you know, I was able to, you know, just have my, I have long arms. So I was able to run and just kind of put my arms down and then just, threw the ball ahead a little bit, took a dribble, and then just was able to get to the rim and finish with a dunk. Absolutely. And so here's the thing I'm curious about is I would say, let's just say if we were in college and that play happened, I would think that both of those, you and Aaron Gordon would have been on the ground, <laughs> right, like in the backcourt before the ball even yeah. got past the half court. Um, and and I don't blame the players for doing that because I think like they're trained. That's how they're trained from sixth grade on is to dive on the floor. So my take on that, by the way, is the worst position you can possibly be in on the basketball court is on the ground with the ball. And so right. why are we training that? And so what I see someone who stays on their feet and accelerates, um, that makes me really excited to see because that's proof that what I'm trying to tell coaches is much better, especially because, let me ask you this, had you dove and gotten the ball, do you get that dunk? I'd probably go out of bounds. <laughs> <laughs> right. I probably mean, at the very least, if you're on the ground, you can't move, right? You can't really yeah. can't roll over, can't do anything. A, you're, you're in a vulnerable position. The guy, you just you don't have much. You're probably going to turn it over. A lot of those situations, guys, turn it over or, you know, burn a timeout. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Or, you know. Now, so have you done that kind of drill where they, like, they roll the ball out and, and then say stay on your feet and go get it with somebody else trying to get it? No. I remember we did have a drill when I was young where, you know, it was like that. You got to. And like tryouts, they had guys diving and stuff for the ball. And I was always a kid trying to like pick it up and go with it if I could, um, just to you know not hurt myself. But um, I think like in certain situations, there has been times where I was able to dive and either get a key, you know, recovery or whatever the case may be. So it kind of, I think it, it is a it depends on the you know say, uh, case to case basis. But if you can get the ball and stay on your feet do that i don't see a point of just diving uh, right for no reason and and by the way that the other thing is it's um i'm not against diving either right there are you I'll, we can probably find 10 plays this year where a guy like saved the game because he dove yeah or whatever. Right. Right. but i just think i'm i think you know what i am i'm against the drills that do that like yeah. you know that shock a smart yeah. thing where they're like you, you dive out of bounds for a save and you take a charge and then you go dive on the floor um, you I should don't know. You should, your intent should be to stay on your feet and try to pick it up and score. And then the secondary option is, you know, whatever else after that, as opposed to like training the mindset of just regardless of what happens, just dive and just. 100% do it again. <laughs> All right. I mean, okay. Because it's like, for me, it, that was that might be the one where I'm like, you know, and I was trying to develop rules about when to dive. Like, okay, if it's in the middle, or no, if it's like toward the, your, your baseline, for instance. Mm -hmm. Well, then, you know, you're not scooping in any way to go all the way down the other side of the floor for the layup. So that's not a bad idea. And I'm thinking even like right. towards the sideline. OK, that's another one where you're not going to be able to just scoop and then keep going. So maybe diving. So we'll, we'll, I'm working on this. You'll Maybe you'll help me and we'll figure out some good rules mm -hmm. for when to lay out and dive and when not to is to make it more beneficial for your team. What do you say? Should we, should we do that together, make a project? Yeah, for sure. <laughs> uh, well, listen, this year, I can't thank you enough for coming on and breaking this stuff down. Uh, I can't wait to see you back on the court. It's really exciting to see what's going on in Portland. Uh, can you feel it, like this youth movement and, and a, new, a new beginning there? Yeah, I definitely feel um, an excitement, um, you know, for, you know, just for me and, you know, Anthony to kind of uh, just us coming to our own uh, along with Dame. And, you know, I think, you know, since we got drafted, that was kind of the thing that I feel like a lot of people were waiting for. Um, so I think, uh, you know, everybody's excited, including me, and uh, ready to just get to it. All right. Do you have any goals for next year, uh, in personal, you know, stat-wise? Yeah, just be as I, best as I can be, stay healthy, stay on the court, and, um, you know, just, you know, win. I think if I just kind of let things, you know, happen the way they happen, you know, for my work in this offseason, I think things will just kind of fall in line the way they should. 
All right. Well, here, here's my goal for you. Ready? 30 minutes a game, uh, 37% from three, uh, and we'll go from there. I think that's that's a pretty good goal for you. How about that? You yeah, know, for sure. For get, sure. get prepared Sounds for good. that. So anyway, well, thank you so much. Get that shoulder healed quickly. Get. Uh, are you back on the court working out and stuff or no? Not yet. Not yet. All right. Well, let's get, get you back on there. I want to I want to hear nothing but good things, and uh, thanks so much. And don't forget, sports fans, at B-Ball Breakdown, we're not a channel, we're a conversation. You win. Are you in this year? Yes, sir. <laughs>